Hello and welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It is no accident that you are here today, friend, so please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit and let's see what the Lord has for us all today. And welcome back to you regular listeners. Thank you for coming another day. Thank you for continuing to download I love being on this journey with all of you. I love looking at God's Word each day. It just brings me such joy, and I am learning so much as I spend time uh, preparing for these things and just thinking about God's Word and sharing with you, and I pray that you are being blessed and are being drawn closer to Him. I want you to know that I do continue to pray for you day after day. Day, I continue to pray that the Lord would draw you closer to Him. He'll give you more of a desire to know Him and His Word, and that you'll be intentional about your time with Him. Friends, we must. We must be intentional about making time to uh, learn more of Him, to know His Word, uh, to pray, to worship. And you may say, I don't have time for that. Oh, friends, we must make time. We must prioritize. And I'm not saying that to make you feel bad or to make you think that I've got it all together. I don't. I am a work in progress. But I can see, I can testify to the fact that if you will make that effort, if you will make it your intention to know his word and know more of him, you will be able to abide in him. You will be uh, helped each step of your way as you're walking in this difficult world. It's hard. You know, we will have glimpses of good things that happen, but there's lots of bad things. And is that because God doesn't love us? No, it's because there's evil in the world. And he loves us so much that he's given us his son. He's given us his spirit. He's made a way for us to have a relationship with him. And that old devil, the deceiver, wants to keep us far away from God the Father and far away from his son Jesus. And so he tries to distract us to tell us that we don't have time. But, oh, friends, we do have time, and we must abide in him. He is the vine. We're the branches. Apart from him, we can do nothing. Apart from him, we'll die. And so I just want to encourage you today. Um, if you weren't able to do much yesterday, purpose that you're going to do a little more today than you did yesterday, okay? And we'll do that for his glory. Uh, please consider sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone who you think may receive a blessing from it. And know that I love to hear from you. I love to hear what God's doing in your life as you're spending more time with him each day. Um, you can find a couple of ways to contact me down in the show notes. There's a quick link for a, a little message. And then there's a link to my email, a word for this day at gmail.com. Our verse for the day for June the 2nd, 2024 comes from the Gospel of Matthew Matthew chapter 6, verse 2, and it reads as follows from the, uh, not from the English Standard Version, from the Legacy Standard Bible. Therefore, when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be glorified by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. O oh, friends, this is a biggie. This is important. It is um, just such a blessing that Jesus has done this teaching, and we're going to park here and see what was going on. We're going to look at, uh, with God's help, the verses beforehand, and uh, for this month of June, because of this chapter of Matthew chapter 6, because there is just so much, I was looking ahead, and Lord willing, if we get uh, the next day, we will uh, continue to uh, have several times that we spend in Matthew's gospel this month. It looks like we're going to be in the gospels quite a bit this month. And so I'm excited for us to park here today. But first of all, let's think about where we are. Uh, we were in the gospels a lot uh, at the end of last month. And so we've talked about this before, but just in case you're new and as by a way of reminder, um, we are in that very first gospel, the very first book of the New Testament. The New 
Testament begins with the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then it moves to that book of Acts, which is the early church history. Then to Paul's letters. There's 13 of those written uh, by the Apostle Paul. Then to general letters written by men who were not Paul. And then to uh, that last book of uh, prophecy, that New Testament book of prophecy, Revelation. These Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, tell us the good news of Jesus' earthly ministry. What happened when he came, What he, some of what he did, um, and why he did it. We get so much of his teaching of those words from Jesus, and it is such a blessing, such a gift that God would give us that he inspired men to write these, these accounts of Jesus' earthly ministry. God sent Jesus to the earth for us, for the whole world, uh, for a way uh, to make a way for us to be reconciled back to him, uh, back to God the Father, uh, because our sin which all of us have, all of us are sinners, our sin separates us from him. He's a holy God. He's righteous. He's righteous. He's just. He's pure. And our sin separates us. But God, because he was so rich in mercy, while we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Jesus. He made a way for us to come back to him. And uh, that was through his son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And God uh, inspired four different men to write the accounts of this in um, these Gospels. Matthew's, Mark's, and Luke's Gospels are known as the synoptic Gospels. They were written from uh, these different men's point of view and um they have the parables. They have many of Jesus' sayings. Uh, John's gospel, as we've talked about, a li- is a little different. It was written from his point of view, uh, but thought to have been written uh, much later when John was quite a bit older, and it was thought that he knew about these other three gospels. And it very much just ties everything together. God used these four different men with four different writing styles from four different backgrounds to tell the same story. The critics of the Gospels, the critics of God's Word will say, well, look, there's differences. Some some uh, writers mention this, some mention this in a different way, so it can't be true. But when we think about just human nature... And then if all of us see the exact same thing, we are going to tell different parts of that based on our personality, based on our point of view, based on our background and uh, our life and what we've lived through and our way of telling things. Um, And so it's very much that way here. It's thought that... um, Matthew was writing primarily to a Jewish audience. We've talked about that quite a bit. He so wanted his fellow Jews to know that Jesus was this long-awaited Messiah. And he uses over 60 Old Testament references to prove, to show, to give proof uh, that Jesus was this one that they'd been looking for. Um, Mark's gospel, as we've talked about, was written by one of the men who was not an apostle. He was a very close traveling companion with the apostle Peter, uh, but he wrote, it's thought primarily originally to the uh, Romans, uh, based on how he wrote, his is the shortest gospel. Matthew's is the longest. Um, Luke was the only Gentile. He was likewise not an apostle, uh, but oh, we see just such um, such wonderfully uh, well-written good news and this chronologic account, this orderly account of the things that Jesus did with a focus on how Jesus dealt with the Gentiles, how he dealt with the unlovable in society. And that is good news for all of us, friends, because most of us listening are Gentiles, in other words, are not of Jewish descent. Um, And then uh, we talked a little bit about John's gospel. Uh, Matthew and John were the only uh, apostles that wrote these gospels, and they had walked with the Lord Jesus. They talked with him. They served with him. They saw his miracles in person. And so it's really neat to think about that as we read Matthew's and John's gospels to think the the man who wrote this although very much inspired by the same Holy Spirit who inspired all the the works of Scripture, 
um, he walked with Jesus. He saw him. And so he wanted people to know. I think that's why he was just so intent on trying to encourage, uh, well, all the apostles were, people to believe because they had seen what Jesus did. They saw his miracles. They saw him be crucified. They saw him after he was resurrected. They saw him ascend back to heaven. They knew that he had given them authority. They had been able to see um people healed and uh, unclean spirits cast out and all these things and they were willing to die and most of the apostles died martyrs deaths um, because they knew it was true they knew uh, that they had seen Jesus they knew that he was the resurrection and the life and so I just love that Matthew opens up his gospel with a genealogy and a lot of people will say oh gracious why did he do this why did he tell who begat who who was the father of whom and it was because it was such a big deal to his fellow Jews they had made a big deal about being able to trace back their lineage and so that's how Matthew opens his gospel and it's really quite neat and there's some wonderful treasures found in this opening genealogy, we see um, some of the women in Jesus's genealogy, and we see that people are grafted in who were not Jews, which is wonderful news for us Gentiles. And so it opens up the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and moves all the way through up to Jesus. And then Matthew gives us some information about the events surrounding Jesus's birth. And after his birth, he and Luke give us the most information about that. Mark really doesn't. Um, John goes all the way back to the beginning of creation. And then we see about John the Baptist preaching um, repentance. And we see about Jesus's baptism. We see in chapter four, when Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit to be tempted by the devil, and then we see him start his ministry full force and begin to uh, choose his disciples. And um, these chapters of uh, chapters five through seven in Matthew uh, record the teaching from this what we call the Sermon on the Mount, and it is just jam packed with so many treasures. Of course. Any word that Jesus spoke should be a treasure to us. It's a wonderful treasure. We are hearing from God. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all one. Jesus was that word made flesh that came to dwell among us. And so he even tells, uh, John records in John's gospel that Uh, Jesus said, what I speak is uh, the words that the Father, and I'm paraphrasing this, are words that the Father has given me. And what he has given us is what the Father has given him. And so when we hear from Jesus, it's coming from God. Jesus was equal to God. He was God. But he also was obedient as a son. And we just see that throughout, uh, throughout the New Testament. And I'm so thankful. But I want to pick up here just to give you the setting of this Sermon on the Mount in um, Matthew chapter 5, I'm sorry, first chapter 4, verse 23. It says, And Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. And the news about him spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. And large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. And beginning at verse 5, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying. And so right there starts the beginning of this Sermon on the Mount. And we know because we were there last month that he uh, teaches on, um, he gives what are called the Beatitudes. um, And we spent some time there. Then he starts to tell them that they are salt and light and begins to tell us how, uh, how we should deal with one another. And what we'll see, especially as we get into this chapter 6 and into chapter 7, 
is Jesus is calling out uh, some of the ways that the religious leaders um, were teaching and how that was different than what God intended. Because there was this religiousness, this following of rules and saying, you have to do this, 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 and this to be good and righteous with God. And um, and if you are not that way, you don't have a chance. And, and if you don't do things as well as we do things, then you don't have a chance. And so there was this um, unfortunate religiousness that were, was keeping people away from God. Uh, these uh, religious leaders who were supposed to be shepherding and and uh, pointing people to God the Father and to obedience to Him and a, a right relationship with Him were just causing uh, people to uh, feel like they were further and further away. And Jesus was going to call that out very much, and we see that here. And just a reminder that we've talked about this in the other Gospels, you know, right after Jesus began his ministry, there uh, came opposition. And it was from the religious leaders who thought that he had no authority, no business to be speaking about the things of God. And then when he explained that God had sent him and that he had been given authority from God the Father, they thought he was blaspheming. And so they were starting to make it their mission to snuff him out, to have him killed. And so they were constantly coming after him, but they knew, uh, they could tell because of his signs and the wonders that he had performed and the authority with which he spoke and his understanding of the scriptures, they had to know that God's hand was on him or that uh, God had given him these things, but some just refused to believe um, and they uh, just couldn't stand it, that they weren't the ones who were uh, had that understanding and could do the things that he could do, and they wanted to snuff him out. Um, but I want you to hear this. Um, it says in chapter 6, verse 1, Beware of doing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Therefore, and this is our verse for the day, when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be glorified by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. And so right there, we start to see when Jesus talks about the hypocrites, he's talking about those who say one thing, but live another way. And many of these were those religious leaders, those who were putting themselves up, um, thinking more highly of themselves than they ought. And so he was teaching the people, but these religious leaders had to be in that crowd too. And there were many, many people there. There were some, I think, who truly wanted to uh, be his disciples and to know what was true and to know more of God. And then there were theirs who were just there uh, for fear of missing out. And then there were there those there who were trying to find ways to accuse him. Um, and so throughout these next several verses, and especially this chapter in the next, we're going to see that he's going to call out the way that uh, some people do, and mostly that's the religious leaders. Um, and he's saying, this is not how it's supposed to be. You may see that he'll say, you have heard it said, do this, but I tell you, do it this way. And that's very much what he's doing here, and it has to do with giving. He says, um, you know, when you give to the poor, don't let everybody know. Don't make a big deal of what you've done. Uh, let it just be, be between you and the Father. If God puts it on your heart to do something, you don't have to tell everybody about it so that you will get the credit. And it's because, friends, and this is this was for them, this is for us. I mean, our flesh part, and we all have a flesh part. Our flesh part 
sometimes wants that notoriety. We want people to say, look at me, look at how good I am, look at what I've done, look at what a difference I've made. But the fact of the matter is, friends, we are dust. We are nothing except for a what he's given us. We can give nothing except that he gave it to us to give. We have nothing except that he gave it. Uh, We have no skills, no ability, no anything. We don't even have the breath that is in our lungs except that he gave us. We don't have another beat of our heart unless he allows it. And so Jesus's point here is, you know, If you're doing this to give you all the notoriety, God's not getting the glory. And that's so important for all of us to remember. And, you know, sometimes those of us who are um, in the church, um, we, we cause by those actions people to not want to come to church because of the way that we act, because we act holier than thou. We act, we think more highly of ourselves than we ought. And and like Paul would say, my friends, this shouldn't be. And so Jesus was given very clear instruction. And it's he said, be beware of doing your righteousness before men um, to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. And so... Um, our, it has to do with our motive. It has to do with our heart. And we've talked about this over and over again. With God, it is always a matter of the heart. What is our true intention? What is our true motive? And we, um, thankfully, with the help of God's Holy Spirit who convicts us and who guides us, we will often know, oh gracious, that is not something I need to be doing. That is not something I need to be saying to toot my horn, so to speak, or to sound a trumpet um, to let other people know what I've done. No, if God calls me to do something, may I do it in humility and with thanksgiving because he has given me that ability to do it. And he sanctifies us. He sanctifies believers. And when I say that churchy word, that means he He uh, sets us apart. He makes us holy, but it's not for our glory. It's for his. And so may we ask him um, to help guide us to help help us keep that flesh part knocked down and may his spirit overflow uh, in us and just bear fruit for him. Because I don't want to do something that Jesus has said don't do, especially when he says beware. When you give to the poor, and it doesn't say if you give to the poor, so right there's another thing. You know, when we are giving, when we are helping, uh, we don't need to be sounding a trumpet like uh, like those religious leaders, um, those hypocrites, those who would say one thing and do another do, both in the place of worship and out in the community. That's what this means, in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be glorified by men. Uh, truly, I say, they have their reward in full. So if we do that, if we toot our horns so that other people can know about us and could say, pat us on the back and say, you did a good job. That's all the reward we're going to get. That pat on the back or you've done a good job. We won't have any reward from the Father. And it's not that we do it for a reward. Really, our motive should be is that we do it for his glory. And friends, we can only have that right heart that right motive uh, when his Holy Spirit guides us and when his Holy Spirit reminds us that it's not about us. And so may we do what we do because of what he has done for us. He has given us life. He has given us grace. He's given us mercy. He's made a way for us to be saved and have life eternal with him. And so may whatever we give or whatever we purpose to do truly be for his glory and his honor and that others may come to know him. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.